Almost all forests in Oregon used to burn regularly. They are, after all, made out of a flammable material. Some forests used to burn much more frequently than others. The pine-dominated forests of eastern Oregon historically burned every five to 15 years. Fire helps recycle nutrients. Fire adds habitat to terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems in the form of dead wood. The logs that we have in stream come from wildfire in many cases. The snags that woodpeckers, black bears, and other wildlife live in are often a function of wildfire. Fire is the dominant disturbance process. It is the force that shapes the structure and composition of the forest that we love and enjoy. When we exclude fire from fire adapted forests, fuel builds up. Litter, duff, grass, shrubs. That fuel builds up around the bases of these old growth ponderosa pine. And when fire moves through that landscape, that, that fuel buildup smolders and it kills the cambium of old growth ponderosa pine and ultimately kills the tree. The choice is not whether we're going to have fire or not. The choice is when and where we have fire and under what conditions. And I think folks intuitively understand that it's a lot less risky to have prescribed fire under the weather conditions that we choose rather than wildfire that burns when Mother Nature chooses. Go for it, Yeah, what were you saying over there? Just over broken up. So prescribed fire is kind of a new thing coming back into the forest, so people aren't really used to seeing us put fire on the ground on purpose. Can I put a little reminder? Sometimes prescribed fires are planned out a year or more in advance, so there's a lot of planning that goes into every single prescribed fire. It's not, we don't just come out here and put fire on the ground. And then the other thing is the porch thing. So, yeah, a six inch by six inch dot. That's how it should start. So prescribed fire helps keep forests healthy, reduce risks from out of control wildfires, and increases community and firefighter safety during wildfire season. One of the biggest challenges in communicating to the public about the need for prescribed fire is overcoming more than a century of uh, messaging and the dialogue in the public that, the, that fire is bad for the forest. And in reality, as we go about restoring health and function to these forests that depend on nat a natural role of fire, we have to overcome that, that, that message that fire isn't, that is a negative force in these forests. Fire is a good thing. These forests depend on fire. There are rainforests out there. These are fire forests. The trees want fire. They thrive in that environment. The wildlife, so birds need down trees to nest. Deer need the habitat and they want the new plants that fire provides. So we go through and we burn it and things come back even better than they were before. If, uh, if we burn on a Monday and it rains on Tuesday, by Wednesday or Thursday we'll already have fresh grass shoots coming out of the ground. And the people in yellow, if they're doing prescribed fire, they're lighting good fire. Fire's gonna happen whether it's on all terms or not, and so if we've got properly qualified people, uh, we can keep everybody safer in the end. All of the benefits that we care about, whether that's wildlife or safer communities, safer houses, safer firefighters, green forests to recreate in, that all depends on our ability to put fire back on the ground in a controlled way.